The fastest growing SaaS companies out there, they become heat seeking missiles on two things. The first is a channel. There's always this one channel where they have an unfair advantage. The second is they identify, they become a heat seeking missile onto an underserved part of the market where they can have an unfair competitive advantage. You see, market segmentation is one of the best tools we have in our arsenal as SaaS founders, as SaaS CEOs, as SaaS leaders to help grow our SaaS businesses faster. But here's the question. How do you actually define a market segmentation? What should it look like? How do you find the right market segmentation? In this episode, I'm going to dig into the four key types of market segmentation and how you can use those and how you can understand the benefits of each of those to craft your market segmentation strategy so you can grow your SaaS business faster. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS business faster with an unstoppable strategy. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon. That way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK energy. If you're already part of my SaaS go-to-market coaching program, if you're part of this community, welcome back. It's so awesome to see you over here. Now, when we were at Tout App, when we were starting off, we would just sell to anybody. Anybody that would sign and hit the sign up free trial link and convert to a credit card would take them. But when we started to grow, when we started to scale, we got very intentional about our ideal customer profile, our positioning and messaging, but particularly about our market segmentation. On the years where we let go of being intentional about our market segmentation, we actually started to slow down in growth. But when we actually doubled down on it and got intentional about it, we started to grow even faster. So this is why market segmentation is super powerful. And it wasn't just a tout app. When I joined the executive team at Marketo and we were doing a two year transformation that had just gone private, led by a private equity firm, market segmentation, going intentionally up market, focusing on the enterprise instead of Marketo's traditional mid market background, we were able to actually accelerate growth. So in this episode, I want to dig into the four types of market segmentations that you can look at and how you can actually craft your own market segmentation strategy so you can actually accelerate the growth of your SaaS business. So I'm going to walk you through these four pieces over here. If you're excited to dig in and go through the first type of market segmentation, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's dig right into it. Okay, so when it comes to market segmentation, the, I'm gonna walk you through four types and we're gonna go from the easiest to the hardest. Now this is a double-edged sword. Easiest means it's easy to implement, but it also means it's easy for your competitors to copy. Hardest means it's hard for you to implement and hard for you to achieve and hard for you to identify, but once you do, it creates natural moats. And it gives you a competitive advantage and it becomes harder and harder for your competitors to copy you. So I'm going to walk you through the four. The fourth one is going to be the hardest, but gives you the most bang for the buck. But let's start with the easiest. The easiest is essentially geo and language. So this may come off a little bit obvious, but maybe not. We actually have a very global audience on this channel. So geo and language is one of the best ways to segment for your market. So if you are a SaaS founder in India or Bangladesh or Pakistan, then it may actually be a strategic advantage for you to just segment for that local market. On the other hand, you could argue that the price sensitivity is so high in that part of the world, you're better off pretending that you are a San Francisco based company and just establishing operations there, even though your cost basis is lower and serving the US English speaking market. So one of the best ways to make that strategic decision, and you'll know it depends, it varies depending on what industry you're serving and what your product is. Geo and language is one of the best ways to double down your market segmentation and start to find underserved parts of the market. Once you've done that, this is the easy one. Everyone knows it. And yet most people default to North America English, but it's not obvious. There are founders that I work with in my go to market coaching program that focus on the South Asian market. they are founders that focus on the European market. they are founders that are based in South Asia, focusing on breaking into the U S market. I have the full gamut and purely depends. It's a strategic question and purely depends on how you approach it. But this is an important first one to get out of the way. Now, the second one you want to dig into is firmographic. This is something that we also talk about when we're talking about the ICP, but 
particularly around market segmentation, thinking about the firmographic market segments is super, super important. The biggest thing to think about in terms of the firmographic aspects is the size of the company, right? And typically, hand in hand with the size of the company, if you are going after a certain market segment, we talked about this in a prior video, you'll also start to think about the complexity of the product. So what does that mean? Like, let's just say that you focus on building and serving the SMB market, and you purposefully say, we're not gonna do mid-market and we're not gonna do enterprise. What this means is that you're gonna go after smaller companies, and you're gonna go after smaller companies, those smaller companies are not gonna need all the bells and whistles, so your strategic advantage would be to actually give them a simpler to deploy, simpler to use, simpler to sign up product, and maybe even a cheaper product. And so, Thinking in terms of firmographics will help you hone in on what your pricing strategy is gonna be, what your go-to-market strategy is gonna be, what your product strategy is gonna be. And as you start to think about these pieces, it'll help you hone in on like, well, how do we really compete here? Why are they underserved? You could argue that, you know what, CRMs. Salesforce owns the enterprise, they own the mid-market, but the SMB CRM market is hugely underserved. HubSpot's doing it, Pipedrive's doing it, but it's not enough, and we really wanna go into a particular type of region where they need CRMs, and we're gonna build CRMs for a particular size of company and a particular uh, complexity level in a particular geo in a particular language. And all of a sudden, you have this combination to make for a niche market that may be underserved where you can compete and win. One of the important things to understand is that nothing is set in stone. A lot of times companies will go into a certain segment, get initial traction, show quality revenues, or raise more money, and then go expand from there. So there's nothing wrong with starting small and expanding from there, as long as you're finding an underserved market. One other thing that comes in handy really well with firmographics is industry. This uh, perfect example of this is Salesforce is a CRM platform for everyone, every industry. But Viva is a CRM platform that is actually specific to the healthcare industry. Not only that, Viva, which is an incredible public company, SaaS business on its own, is actually built on the Salesforce platform. The founders of that company decided, you know what? We're gonna focus on a specific industry, specific type of company, and, and, and actually build out and serve that underserved market in a way that none of the broader horizontal guys can ever compete with us. And, that, and they built it on the Salesforce platform and Viva did phenomenally well. So that's a perfect example of how just with geo and language, plus the firmographics, you can start to find underserved parts of the market. Now here's the thing, before I go to three and four, first of all, are you seeing the power of this? Are you starting to see the power of how thinking about market segmentation and finding underserved markets and being a heat-seeking missile to find those can actually help you compete better, grow faster, and actually get traction. You starting to see the power on this? Can I just get a yes in the comments below? Also smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really likes it when you do that. Do that. Also, if you're starting to figure out your go-to-market strategy, if you're looking for ways to scale your SaaS business faster, I encourage you to check out my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. Inside of this program, I work with founders like you, along with my framework, along with my actual experience in scaling SaaS businesses to help you grow faster. I'll tell you more about it at the end of this video. Let's go to principle number three, market segmentation type number three. Now, the third type of market segmentation is behavior. This is essentially the behavior of your buyer or that market segment. Now, they may have certain tendencies, certain preferences. So for example, they may be price sensitive or they may actually not be price sensitive, they literally just want the highest paid thing, the most premium thing, so that they can actually be rest assured that they're getting the best. That's a perfectly good way to segment the market and say, look, there's the price conscious part and there's the part that, that wants to overpay just to make sure that you're getting the bang for the buck. Like if you think about uh, the hedge fund industry, the hedge fund industry is notoriously known to want to spend money on tech and actually outcompete their competitors by spending extra on tech. So they're not price conscious at all. Whereas on the other hand, if there's a dying industry, let's just say you're selling to the newspaper industry. Well, they don't even have enough money to go spend on tech. They're dying and they're trying to survive so they may be very price conscious. So thinking in terms of their behavior and their purchasing behavior and their preferences can be another way to find underserved parts of the market that you can better serve and compete and have unfair advantages around. Now, the question may be, what are some other ways you can tap into behavior? Well. The second one could be delivery. 
This is a very, very important one because these days all the rage is product-led growth. But want to know how to compete with a product-led growth business? Go into the market segment that they're serving and give them a more of a white glove service for a little bit more money. So you'd be amazed. This is something that happened in the early days of ToutApp. We were self-service, our competitor was self-service. And we started to go up market. As we started to go up market, we realized there were larger deals to be had. There were group plans to be had. And if all we needed to do, if we were in a competitive deal, was just show up. If we literally showed up in their office and had a meeting and told them like, hey, we're gonna be a long-term partner. Here's how we're gonna help you. Here's how we're gonna help you think strategically about your sales process, sales methodology. We'll share the insights with you. Boom, we won the deal. While the other competitor just kept trying to do their PLG play. So this is a perfect example of identifying certain behaviors. There may be certain market segments that prefer the white glove service and are willing to pay more for it. They prefer to talk to salespeople instead of trying to figure out their own way through a product and a product-led growth approach. They prefer to have a cold call to say, hey, are you thinking about this? And they're like, we are not, can you come in tomorrow? And the people come in tomorrow and they think through it and they pay 100K for the software. So this is another example of using behavior as a way to do market segmentation because when you do it this way, you can find unfair advantages and you can actually cater to that segment in a more competitive way, in a way that no one else can compete. And that's where the power is. The final piece on behavior is also quality. There are certain segments of the market where they'll take buggy software as long as it's a lower price and they can just sign up for the trial and they can use it. Now that segment of the market will probably churn also. There are other parts of the market that says, no, we wanna to pay top dollar. We wanna to talk to salespeople. We wanna make sure there's a dedicated CSM for what we're doing. We wanna make sure that we actually have the highest quality. It's been stress tested, security tested, pen tested, and we don't care how much the price is. We just want all those things met. Different segments of the market, but maybe for the same product. And if you can figure out which one you're better equipped to serve, you can, and you actually do this harder thing of building out that sales team, that CSM team, that strategic partnership, and you actually amp up the quality of your product and you actually charge more, you may be able to decimate the competition because they're trying to do some sort of product-led thing, but it's not quite working because these, this segment of the market just wants a higher glove service. Now, not to say that one is bad and one is good, it's just different levers you can start to turn to actually compete and to serve the market in a deeper way. Now, before I go to number four, let me just remind you of one thing. In case you haven't noticed, the more further down this way we go, the harder these become to implement. It's very easy to wake up one morning and say, you know what, we're selling to South Asia today, we're now gonna sell to Europe, and if we already got Europe, now we're gonna go sell to North America. Or you're in North America and you're like, you know what, ANZ, the Australian region is very similar in terms of taste and behavior as North America, so we're gonna go sell there now. So this is easy to pivot into and start to engage in growth. It's a little bit easier to also say we're only gonna serve this industry, right? Or a little bit easier to say we're only gonna work in the mid-market. All of a sudden, it becomes a little bit harder when you start getting into this, where you actually have to come up with a compelling pricing strategy. You actually have to change your delivery, build out a sales team, build out a CSM team. You actually have to amp up the quality. But because this is harder, it's also harder to copy. So this can actually differentiate. So as we go this way, these are harder ways to find segments of the market and, and cater to them. But if you do, you actually strengthen your moats, your competitive moats, which is super, super important. Now, the fourth way, which is probably the hardest way, but rightfully so, are needs. These are needs. These are unique needs that segments of the market have. What are, what are some examples of this? Well, the first one could be security. And let me list these out, and then I'll give some detail on each of them. The second one could be deep integrations. And the third one could be brand, trust. Let's walk through these. These are needs. These are you know harder and harder to do, even more than just geo or firmographic or behavior. All of a sudden now, you know, they, this is a particular industry that wants to pay the higher price and they want top level security. They want your SOC 2 done. 
They want to make sure that you're hosting your data centers yourself, not just on Amazon Web Services. Maybe they want deep integrations into some legacy software that they have invested into and the rest of the industry has invested into. You know, perfect example of this is health tech. You have to integrate into the EMR and it's super hard to get integration points into those systems. These are needs. These are specific things that a segment might need. That's the only way they'll do business with the company and the rest of the competitors just can't play at that level. But if you raise sufficient money and you're ready to invest in it, you can do these pieces and start to st serve these segments in the market. And as you'll notice, the higher the needs are, the harder these get. Generally speaking, the price goes up and the quality of the customers go up too. Meaning once you get these customers, they're not going to churn. Yes, the bar is higher, but once you land these deals, they're going to stick with you forever. And in some cases, you can actually find needs like deep, you can fulfill needs like deep integration at a low price for a specific industry and a specific geo. And those are secrets. Those are like the perfect combination where all of a sudden it's not that hard for you, but no one else is figuring it out. So you piece together the perfect combination. And when you focus on that segment of the market, you're able to go dominate. So all of these are puzzle pieces. And as you start to look at the market, this is why I say you have to become a heat seeking missile. You start to tweak these pieces and boom, 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 they kind of click. And as you start to do the test, you realize, oh my God, we can serve this segment of the market all day long and no one will be able to compete. And so this is the fourth way, fourth type of market segmentation where you think about their needs. The last piece on this one is, is brand. And a perfect example of this, if you've noticed like Oracle, you might think like, oh my God, who still buys Oracle, the stodgy old company? And how do they have the money to, uh, to sponsor a yacht, a Formula One car? Well, the reason is, they are catering to a set of customers that, are, that have a need to buy the best brand. And believe it or not, they're not buying necessarily the best software. What they're buying is the most well-known brand. And that's why Oracle says, all right, we're gonna start, sell to the top tier. We're gonna take that money and sponsor the top tier and our brand is gonna be everywhere. It's gonna be well-known and no one's ever gonna be fired for choosing Oracle or IBM as the, as the saying used to go. And so this is another way you can start to build competitive modes and also serve underserved parts of the market because no one else can compete at this level. You'll notice again that this is harder than these pieces and this is harder than these pieces and this is harder than these pieces. However, if you implement this, you also it's harder for your competitors to copy you. So to recap, Market segmentation, becoming a heat seeking missile to find underserved parts of the market is one of the best ways to compete, build moats and grow faster. There are four ways to develop your market segmentation. It comes through permutations of these key pieces. Number one, you can think about geo and language. That's the easiest. Number two, you can think about firmographic. Number three, you can think about behavior. Number four, you can think about needs. Once you start to find these underserved pieces of the market, then you actually have to translate this into your ICP. You have to translate this into your strategic narrative. You have to translate this into your positioning and messaging. And you have to, position, uh, you have to translate this into your, what I call your Broadway show, which is how you generate demand. Meaning it's one thing to do this exercise and find it, but then you have to translate it and actually communicate it and run the sales and marketing plays to test it out and start to take advantage of that underserved market segment. So that's what how this whole piece comes together. Now, if you are in that stage where you're figuring out your market segmentation and you have to flesh out these strategic pieces on what does our ICP look like given the segmentation, how do we communicate it to these people on how we're uniquely differentiated and we can serve them on the things that they care about based on their behavior, their needs, their firmographics, how do you actually get their attention and actually get them into the sales process or your product? If you're at that stage where you're figuring those pieces out, this is exactly why I created my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. Inside of SaaS go-to-market coaching program, I give you the framework that you can follow to actually implement these pieces, build out that go-to-market strategy and execute on it. And the best part about this is you get a framework to follow and you get my coaching as someone that's been there, done that, and actually been in the trenches 
I can actually help guide you in this journey to establishing your strategy, running the plays, and actually testing out what's working, what's not, and tweaking from there. This is why I created my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. So if you wanna learn more about that, just go to tkcater.com slash gtm. tkcater.com slash gtm. Inside there, you'll get all the details, and you'll have a link at the bottom to actually put in your email address and apply to join and get on a call with me where we can figure out if we can actually help you and where you are in your SaaS business. If, we, if it's a great fit, then we're off to the races and we can start to work together, not only to figure out your right market segmentation, but actually mobilize it with a proper scalable go-to-market strategy so you can grow your SaaS business faster. So just go to tkkater.com slash GTM and we can get on a call and we can actually figure out how we can help you. If you got value from this video, be sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new and you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon. I drop a video like this with actionable strategies to grow your SaaS business faster two to three times a week. So hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. If you have a fellow founder, a team member, if you're part of a WhatsApp group or Slack group where you can share this video for other founders to get value, please do that. It'll mean the world to us. We put a lot of love into these videos. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. When you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK and I'll see you in the next episode.